Hi, and good evening, and welcome to our ninth session of this run of the between. Um, again, as, as as I always say, this is uh, several several sessions into our, our campaign now. Um, so if you do want to find out more about it, I would suggest going back to the beginning and watching from there. But if you are just dropping in now, then the between is a game of um, uh, Gothic mon monster hunters in Victorian London, um, dealing with various um, various problems around the city. Um, this uh, game is by Jason Cordova, um, and uh, this this game is both published by, and this this particular run of it is arranged through uh, the Gauntlet, which is an online role playing group. You can find more information about everything that we do um, at gauntlet-rpg.com. I'll put a link to that down below. But as well as the gaming calendar and the games that we publish, uh, we have a number of podcasts. Uh, we also have um, a gaming magazine called Codex, uh, through which this was sort of initially released. So if you're interested in any of that, do check out the website. But we are going to pick off where we left off uh, last time, which uh, which was two weeks ago, um, as, as uh, unfortunately I was away last week. But um, I'm going to ask uh, each of our uh, each of our players to introduce themselves and tell us a little bit about what uh, they got to last time, and uh, we'll have a quick recap, and then we'll just uh, jump straight back into things. So uh, I'm going to, as ever, go in uh, character keeper order. Uh, so um, I'd say if you'd like to uh, start stuff. Sure. Hi, everybody. My name is Jose, and my pronouns are he and him, and I'm playing uh, Lady uh, Camilla Betancourt Davies. Her pronouns are she and her. Um, she is a wealthy aristocrat in Victorian London in the 1880s. 1880s, that's where we are, right? <laughs> um, uh, and um, in uh, earlier times, she was an explorer um, uh, uh, overseas, um, conquering new lands for Her Majesty the Queen. Uh, but she's returned to London to combat more supernatural threats to um, to Great Britain um, and the Empire. Um, and did you ask us to talk about last time a bit? Um, what do I remember from last time? I remember we were at an art exhibition um, being hosted by Lord Falkenberg. And um, what's something that I remember from that art exhibition? I remember that Lady Camilla had an interesting conversation with James Whistler about um, uh, the, a model for his one of his paintings. Um, uh, and um, yeah, that's the main thing I remember from that. Um, I think we're still in the midst of that art exhibition, so more to be revealed. Glad to be here. Brilliant, thank you very much. Um, and next is, I think, Fujisawa. Yeah, um, I am Elle, who pronouns are she, her, and I'm playing Fujisawa, who also goes by she, her pronouns. Uh, Fujisawa is a servant, a factotum of Hargrave House, um, and specifically of our vessel, Priyanka Balakwa. Uh, Fujisawa is also at attendance or in attendance at um, Lord Falkenberg's art exhibit, where she has been studiously avoiding contact with James Whistler, um, the painter with whom she spent a night uh, recently that she uh, regrets for, for various reasons. Um, so it's particularly unfortunate that there's a portrait of her um, painted by him hanging in the exhibition. Um, I think last time she was also getting increasingly bothered by her employer's social maneuverings at the exhibition and lack of attention toward Fujisawa. Um, so yeah, that's uh, where she is right now. Excellent, thank you very much. And uh, next, um, Daryl. 
Hello, hello. I'm Daryl. My pronouns are they, them. And I am playing Miss Priyanka Balakwa, whose pronouns are she, they. And uh, Priyanka is the vessel. So uh, Priyanka has been keeping a very tenuous um, hold on the uh, dark forces that continue to plague them and um, has become increasingly uh, unable to contain many of their baser and more dark impulses as we have gone through um, a number of horrific events. Uh, we are currently at a party and uh, that's you know a place where ostensibly should be on our best behavior. Uh, however, we have set up liaisons with multiple different people, including um, the uh, unbeknownst to us mastermind, Lord Falkenberg, and then also a very mysterious woman in black whom uh, have both promised to uh, spend some time, some intimate time with Priyanka over the course of the evening. Um, I have, of course, brought my servant because I can't go anywhere without a servant, but uh, the, she seems to be very, um, invested in her work lately, and I might have to have a talk with her about that. Yes, that's Brianka. Brilliant. Thank you very much. And last but not least, uh, Brian. Brian, he, him, and I'm playing uh, Professor Eloise Cockburn, the Acolyte. Uh, in addition to being a member of the Hargrave House, he is a member of the Esoteric Conclave of the Darkened Moon. Uh, last time we saw him uh, showing off all the languages he speaks with, uh, was it the son of the Iranian ambassador and a, a priest? Yes, that's that's correct. Yeah, so um, uh, that was Darius Mazdaki and um, I was going to remind myself of his surname. Um, Nathaniel, Nathaniel Bywater. That's it, yep. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you very much. So yes, I think um, we've had a fairly thorough uh, recap, but yeah, um, yes, the last time we we um, had some investigations during the day, and then in the evening we we moved to the art exhibition in uh, Cheney Walk. Um, we we saw some of the artworks on display. We met some of the people there. Um, so we're going to drop back into things um, at the art exhibition. We're about halfway through our night phase, at least judged in terms of um, uh, of um, unseen and the like. So that's where we're going to pick things back up again. Um, and yeah, just, just as, a, as a sort of reminder, I'm just going to quickly recap on the uh, notable people who are present here. Um, and by notable, I mean mostly people you've encountered from other um, um, from other uh, threats. Uh, so yes, there's the uh, Reverend Nathaniel Bywater, who you know to be um, linked with the um, uh, the Gin Lane murders. Um, he has invited. Um, uh, the professor to a uh, a bacchanal um, uh, somewhere in London, um, and uh, that that seems to be kind of his thing. It seems to be into into classics. There is someone I, I don't think anyone's um, interacted with yet, but uh, a lady by the name of Sophie Burns, who is a pianist who is entertaining here tonight, um, but but kind of does the rounds of the pubs in London uh, in general, and is is likewise associated with the uh, Gin Lane murders. Uh, the Abernathy's, um, Cyrus and Portia, uh, as well as their long-suffering um, uh, manservant, uh, Periwinkle, um, are all present here tonight as well, um, who are associated obviously with the, um, the Waitley camera. Uh, and finally, uh, James Whistler, the artist who is associated with the um creature of Cremon Gardens and you are also um just like over the road from Cremon Gardens as well so if at any point anyone wants to kind of um you know leave the party behind and, and go for a wander in the pleasure gardens uh it is right outside um so yeah and uh yes as well you have um uh 
uh, Darius Mazdaki here, who is um, the current, uh, one of Lord Falkenberg's current muses, um, a young man, uh, as, as mentioned, son of the uh, uh, Iranian ambassador to, um, uh, to London. Um, and um, Lord Falkenberg himself is present. Uh, you've also met Alessandra Volpe, um, who is the, the woman in black um, that um, uh, Priyanka mentioned, um, who has, has um, yeah, introduced herself as a, um, a Strega, uh, a seer, um, who seems to be directly related with uh, Lord Falkenberg himself as well. So that's kind of where we are at. Um, so we're gonna, as I said, we are in in the night phase. Um, we had our unseen in progress, which I believe was uh, a night at the museum. Which um, so I'll just just kind of um, give the 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 top level version of this again. Um, and then, uh, Brian, I'll be coming to you with question three to get us kicked off this evening. Um, so, um, in the heart of Bloomsbury, the British Museum has recently been expanded and renovated, housing relics of civilizations plundered by British adventurers, explorers, and colonial officers. Kamal Mansour once led excavations in Luxor, but came to work at the museum as a caretaker, uh, and we follow him on his nightly rounds. So, uh, Brian, the question I'm going to put to you um, to kick us off tonight is, uh, in the Egyptian hall, Kamal is surrounded by the works of his ancient ancestors, some of them pulled from the sands by his own hands. What here demonstrates inevitable looming death? There is, um, you know, a, a slab of stone uh, covered in writing, and there, there is a, uh, you know, a plaque on the wall next to it, uh, offering the the translation. Uh, which basically, uh, what it says is, you know, it's uh, a, a ruler, you know, uh, it's 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 saying how the you know the glorious rule and and you know look upon all of these you know great monuments uh to the the glory of, of this ruler who will never be forgotten and uh the portion that says like the name of the ruler it just says in brackets illegible brilliant thank you awesome so um as we um as we get things um, kicked off again. Um, and apologies if, if, I, uh, if I have uh, <laughs> forgotten anything in the time since we last, uh, we last met, but um, yeah, I think, um, I think kind of um, everyone's like immediate conversations had all moved on. Um, I think everyone is currently kind of um, free agents, as it were. Uh, there are a couple of um, pending meetings, maybe, uh, to take place later in the evening. But um, I think for the for the time being, um, you will have a little bit of time um, in which you can um, sort of do as you wish. Um, if there's anyone you want to seek out, whether that be um, a um, a side character um, or one of your fellow hunters, um, then feel free to do so. Um, if also, if there's any kind of side characters you think it would be interesting to encounter here that I haven't specifically mentioned, uh, feel free to ask if if it's you know if it's possible to meet with them as well, and we can we can kind of make that uh, make that happen. Um, but with that said, yeah, I'm going to kind of turn turn things back to to yourselves, um, and I'll I'll just go back to character keeper order again and say, um, Lady Camilla, is there anything in particular that you would like to um, get up to, or anyone you want to speak with? 
Um, I think Lady Camilla um, will seek out Priyanka because um, uh, she saw Priyanka speaking to Lord Falkenberg earlier and she has something to say to Priyanka about that. So that's one thing. Awesome. Awesome. That's great. Yeah. Um, and um, Fujisawa, how about yourself? Uh, I think Fujisawa is going to continue her conversation with Harry Winkle and perhaps also try to get some information about the, the Waitley camera from him. Sure thing. Sure thing. Um, awesome. And um, Priyanka. Um, Priyanka is totally fine being um, cornered by Lady Camilla, if that's what happens before we have a way to um, get Lord Falkenberg alone to uh, continue our conversation from earlier. Yeah, that sounds great. And um, Eloise, how about yourself? Uh, I think... I think in this kind of situation, Eloise is just going to blend in with the crowd and go unnoticed and use his move, uh, the person on the street. Awesome. Which I, sounds... I imagine probably involves a lot of just like being, you know, completely ignorable. And so he can eavesdrop on all kinds of things and who knows what else. Uh, yeah, exactly. We'll, 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 we'll touch on that in a moment. But yeah, I imagine it involves lots of holding a glass of wine in one hand and a canapé in the other and just kind of standing there, um, which tends yeah, to be my experience of, li of listening <laughs> to the conversation event. that's happening like right behind him. Yeah, absolutely. Um, awesome. Um, so yeah, um, I think we will then um, uh, kick off with um, our um, I think actually, yeah, in which case I will hand things over to uh, Lady Camilla and Priyanka, and I think we'll start things off there. So yeah, cool. feel free to set the scene as you wish. And uh... so um, where does Lady Camilla approach? She's going to approach Priyanka from behind. Um, uh, but what is Priyanka doing? <laughs> Uh, Priyanka is um, engrossed in a very large triptych of paintings that have that um, aforementioned uh, horrific Baconian style that hasn't quite actually emerged in the, the in, like in Bacon yet, but um, <laughs> is uh, sipping at what's possibly their third or fourth glass of champagne. Uh, they have um, not been counting their drinks because um, the alcohol makes the darkness easier to keep at bay. <laughs> and Lady Camilla slips in behind a Priyanka and says to her, so that only she can hear, um, do not be seduced by Lord Falkenberg. Lucian is certainly charming, but underneath he's a predator, a dangerous predator, Priyanka. Um, Priyanka turns, uh, takes another sip of their champagne and looks at Lady Camilla and says, that certainly is the problem with hunters. They seem to forget that not everyone is prey. And you will do well to remember it yourself, my dear. Do what you must with Lord Falkenberg. But remain on guard at all times, lest you find yourself to be his next meal. Um, uh, Priyanka turns more fully toward Lady Camilla and says, Lady Betancourt Davies, I would hazard to say that perhaps you are maybe a bit threatened that someone else might be encroaching upon your own hunt. I only speak with concern for you, my friend. And for the interests of Hargrave House, of course. 
be careful. I see that you have been partaking in the refreshments quite liberally tonight. You may not be at your best judgment. So as I said, have a care. And she touches Priyanka's um, arm just lightly. And if you need assistance, we hunters are here to help you. Remember, we are part of a team. Lady Camilla, it is because of the fact that we are a part of a team and that we have our own unique connection that I know for a fact that a man such as Lord Falkenberg poses no real threat. When one has seen much scarier things in the dark, one tends to not fear the things that show their face in the light. I am ill at ease. I do not know what Lord Falkenberg is about. But I fear he may be as terrifying as some of the horrors you speak of, Priyanka. You have no idea of the horrors I've seen, Lady Camilla. Perhaps not. But we all have our secrets, don't we? And I have lived many years longer than you, Miss Balakwa. Do not imagine that I have not seen the horrors of this world. I will leave you now and not persecute you further with my warnings. I have given them. Take them to heart. And she turns around and walks away. She always has to have the last word, if you've noticed about Lady Camilla. <laughs> Indeed, she does. Uh, <laughs> uh, Priyanka, um, <laughs> Priyanka, um, turn, and Priyanka is used to this and also um, realizes that uh, they are not actually that invested in the game of who gets the last word um, <laughs> because they, they have once again uh, seen and said far more than uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, they believe Lady Camilla has ever seen, <laughs> truthfully or not. And um, they turn back to the uh, painting and contemplate it again. And another, like a waiter appears next to them and they set the, the empty glass down and pick up another glass and uh, continue to stare into the, the hideous mire of oil on canvas. Awesome. Um... So yeah, um, I think we will, I think actually I'm going to just touch in first with uh, Alois um, and just get a little uh, initial description of, um, yeah, kind of how, I mean, we, we sort of kind of know already, but kind of a, a, a little snippet of how you're sort of fading into the background and what we see going on around you as you do. Yeah, I think it's a lot of him like kind of standing in between two groups so that each group kind of assumes he's part of the converse, the other conversation next to them. Well, really, he's just trying to kind of listen to both. And yeah, also just yeah, slipping to the side, listening to, to you know, any of the other other people who are being ignored, the people who are working there. Uh, running things just to see if they hear what they're talking about. Just, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Um, perfect. And yeah, um, Pujasawa. Um, yeah, so so you were sort of with um, uh, with Periwinkle or, or if, if, if you had been separated briefly, I can't, I can't quite remember what happened at the end of last time. Um, uh, you, you will find each other again. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, uh, I think, um, much like Priyanka, Hosisawa has been, uh, sipping liberally from her flask of whiskey, um, for the, uh, duration of the exhibition. And, um, we find her and Periwinkle maybe standing in front of a 
painting on the other side of the gallery. Um, Fujisawa has this sort of sour look on her face, um, perhaps because the painting is not to her taste, but perhaps because she's just not in a great mood. Um, and if I'm remembering correctly, Periwinkle is wearing like not much and instead is like covered in silver paint. Is that is that's, that right? That's right. Yeah. I think if I remember correctly, he's kind of dressed like a disco ball. He's like <laughs> painted silver with lots of like mirrors. Uh yeah, lots of like small pieces of mirror kind of festooned around him. Amazing. Um yeah, so I think we see Fujisawa kind of taking in more of this outfit out of the corner of her eye and then she finally just like turns to periwinkle and says are you in love with the abernathys you must be right to let them dress you up treat you like a toy i mean i wouldn't say i'm in love with them as such. I mean, I don't think so. Not, not really. But I mean, I've, I've made love with them, um, I think both and separately. And well, we, we don't need to go into all of that. But um, I mean, they, they pay well, and um, it's. Um, more interesting than most of the service work I've done, I've I've got to say. Um, at least the Abernathys are um open about what they want. Mm. I I have to say I envy you, Periwinkle. I wish I understood more about what my employer wants. I mean, I, I know her, their daily wants and needs and routines, but they can be hard to read. And certainly there's no lovemaking going on. Do you, um, do you wish that there was? As you saw, it takes another long sip. I think before she was like trying to hide the glass, but she's now just sort of drinking it openly and she doesn't care. The other hunters see her drinking on the job. Um, I don't know. I think so, but sometimes I think that I just spend so much time giving them my attention that I just want to be seen as well. It's um, difficult sometimes, I think, trying to get that balance between being what they want you to be and being what you want you to be. Well, you assume that I know what I want to be as well. <sighs> I suppose, I suppose. In any case, maybe you can get my mind off the fact that um, my employer is meeting with the Lord Falkenberg, whatever his name is. Tell me more about your work at uh, the Society. It sounds fascinating. Yeah, and I think I'm going to ask you to make uh, the information move here with uh, with presence, if you would. Yes, give me a moment to open the dice roller. So no, I was forgot. No, <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. <laughs> Not open. 
I don't think I've opened it either, actually. And you said presence, right? Uh, yeah, I think presence here. Okay. Uh, that's an eight. An eight, excellent. So, um, I think that um, I think that Perwinkle is going to kind of lean in and say, I am. Um, I know that the Abernathys have been meeting with um, Lord Falkenberg a lot recently. His, I don't think he's a member of the society per se, but um, you know he hangs around in similar circles, um, and they all kind of gesture around the room, you know, artsy types, all of that. But there's there's one room back of the house that I'm I don't think I'm supposed to know about. I've certainly I've been shown it. There's a hidden door in one of the rooms. And inside there's Lots of like really weird stuff. And I mean, I know there's like weird stuff all over the place there, but I mean like weird, weird, like I don't know. Um just just strange things in there. That the, the whole place has a feel like that it's used for I don't know, something different, something strange it's it's no good for photography in there everywhere else you know has big windows and the light that you need but there it's dark and gloomy and just full of full of strange things um and as you as sort of periwinkle is talking to you um fujisawa you will just kind of notice looking at you and clearly, like watching you, watching you and Periwinkle together, um, is um, kind of quite a tall man, broad shouldered, well built, um, in a nondescript suit. Um, he has kind of a big, impressive handlebar moustache, um, but his eyes kind of, even as though you can definitely tell he's looking at you, he's just got those kind of eyes that look like they almost stare through you. Um, that kind of you know thousand yard stare kind of look in his eyes um and he doesn't look like he fits in here he's got that kind of rigid military bearing to him and he's just it doesn't he doesn't do anything he doesn't say anything but you can tell he's kind of watching you um and watching periwinkle with you um and keeping an eye on you both um and, and i will also point out um for, for reasons we will we'll learn shortly um, that clue I've just given you is actually a mastermind clue, not a regular clue. Um, Ooh, okay. So, so feel free to jot that down uh, on the on the mastermind thing. So, yeah, that is a um, uh, a hidden room with occult paraphernalia. Awesome. 
And I think uh, Fujisawa, when she sees this other man, this um, out of place man staring in their direction, um, I think she'll kind of gently, um, the slightly clumsily pat Periwinkle on the shoulder um, and she'll say, excuse me, Periwinkle, I'll be right back. And she's just gonna like walk right up to this man. Awesome, awesome. Um, and I think then we will go over to our next uh, description of the, um, uh, of our exhibition here. So another paint the scene question. Um, I don't think we had this one before, though I think we had at least one artwork that could well fit into it. Um, so um, uh, exhibit three um, is um, a collection of images of human bodies uh, warped, damaged, or destroyed. Um, and the paint the scene question here is, do you see fresh horrors in these images or are you jaded to the scenes? And would you feel more comfortable if it was the other way around? Um, so I will just paste that in chat as well so people can see it. Cool. Um, so as ever, I will um, give you all a moment and then um, whoever wants to jump in can do so. We won't do this in any particular order. I uh, just feel free to shout out when you have uh, have a description of one of the artworks on display. Okay, I th I think uh, I think it always comes comes across a painting of um, like a a, a a a tribe of cannibals uh, you know, consuming consuming a team of uh, English explorers and and, and realizing he, he he he's eaten human flesh and is has. Is maybe uh, the can, uh, yeah. He, he's one of the cannibals, uh, not necessarily one of the explorers. And I think he would be more comfortable if he was not identifying with the cannibals. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I think there's a painting of a dark haired woman. Um, the painting is titled simply Immolation. And the woman in the painting is depicted um, having burst into these like bright orangey red flame. And you can see the, the skin beginning to, to char up her neck drawing your eye up to her face. And she just has this mysterious, almost kind of like Mona Lisa-esque um, smile as she burns. And I think Fusawa is horrified um, by this painting. Um, but she tries to immediately kind of like tamp down that, that sensation of horror um, as she has had to many times uh, in the course of her work for Hargrave House. Um, she probably would be more comfortable uh, were she jaded to this type of imagery, um, but that day has not yet come.
there is a relatively small painting in the corner of the room uh, called Justice of the Barnyard. And uh, its initial color scheme is very bright and it's painted in a mostly realistic representational style of um, reminiscent of uh, Paul Gauguin, but the subject matter is uh, a horrifying um, disembowelment of a farmer while, while the uh, farm animals um, feast upon him in an act of vengeance and justice against the, the man who has imprisoned them in this setting. Uh, it's evocative of, even though um, Guernica wouldn't have been painted for 50 more years, it's almost as if it was uh, a Gauguin take on the subject matter of that painting. And uh, when Priyanka looks at it, uh, they almost find the image too playful when they think back on the bodies that they've seen torn to shreds by the various monsters of London. And they realize that they have become so normalized and so cynical to the violence that uh, accompanies their job. And there's a part of them that longs for a more innocent time when that something like this would have shocked them more easily. So I think um, Lady Camilla is um, in a part of the exhibition where there are, again, these pre-Raphaelite paintings, like, but very ethereal mythological themes like Burne Jones, and things like that. Um, but amongst them is a painting that seems to stand out. Um, it's um, of the Attic War between the Amazons and the Athenians. And um, it's about the fall of Hippolyta, the queen of the Amazons in that war. And it's portrayed in a particularly brutal way. Um, uh, she's pierced by many spears. Um, uh, and um, the Athenians and Theseus just look um, perfectly idealized and, um, uh, and have these expressions on their face of calm confidence and almost nonchalance as they brutalize um, the queen of the Amazons. Um, and, um, and this gets under Lady Camilla's skin, although she has seen many horrors. Um, there's something about this, the injustice of it and the portrayal of it that seems disrespectful. And I think she uh, cracks the stem of her uh, champagne glass as she's looking at this um, uh, painting and then turns around and walks away. Awesome, thank you everyone. So um, I think we'll just have a couple of little quick moments um, uh, before we take our first break. So um, I think um, I think actually first I'm going to come to you. Uh, professor, and uh, just ask if you can just narrate a, a, a brief moment of um, uh, of kind of the the goings on of the people um, around you um, as you're you're fading into the background. I mean, I think I think lo most of the conversations are, are pretty boring. Either they're they're talking about the artwork in ways that aren't terribly interesting, and he kind of moves on, or they're just talking about you know just their petty you know everyday uh, you know gossiping and.
maybe maybe there's a few conversations that are that are a little more interesting to them just because they're not being uh, done in English, and and so they're assuming that they're <laughs> completely being uh, unoverheard. Uh, but those, you know, for the most part, uh, it's more just interesting because it's a chance for him to practice uh, translating German in his head uh, at the speed that he can speak it <laughs> instead of just reading it. Excellent, excellent. Um, perfect, thank you. So, um, I think um, yeah, I think we will hop over briefly to um, Priyanka, um, and I think uh, I think we'll catch back up with um, Alessandro Volpe. Um, I think that the the two of you have kind of come back into one another's um, orbit again, maybe out on one of the little um, balconies, uh, looking out over the Thames. Um, you know, the the lights are reflecting off of the surface of the water. Um, and um, Alessandra is kind of leaning against the, uh, the the balustrade, almost kind of merging into the um, the night sky in her uh, her black outfit. I think uh, Priyanka closes the distance between the two of them and actually um, rests their hands on the balustrade and looks out over the balcony so that they are effectively next to each other, but one is facing inward towards the party and the other is facing outward toward the city and uh, says, uh, Madame Volpe, it is... Uh, quite fortuitous to run into someone of your uh, exceptional spiritual skills here this evening. I must admit that I am intrigued by someone who has such significant experience in these things, in these matters. I have heard much of your talents, my dear. I would like to see them, if I might first hand, would you be so kind as to indulge me with a little demonstration of what you can do? Uh, Priyanka, Priyanka smiles uh, to themselves a little bit and then um, pulls their purse out and uh, you could like the click of the, la uh, the clasp as they pull out the uh, deck of tarot cards from their bag and um, begins very, you know, deftly to shuffle the cards uh, in a way that um, one would, uh, there's almost a, a, a card shark quality to it. Um, someone who's very professional with the way that they, um, they move the cards back and forth. And uh, we are going to do our move, A Thinning of the Veil, um, to uh, consult our divina divination tools for a glimpse of the future. Um, I'm also going to uh, mark my hand-painted custom tarot deck personal quarters artifact to um, add an additional plus one to this. Uh, and my sensitivity is already a three, so uh, it's going to be a plus four. On the oh, um, sorry, with, with the marking the personal quartz items, it's um, rolling with advantage, so you roll an extra dice and take the two the two highest, but yeah, that, that's cool. Um, cool. Okay, let me open up the dice ring. Let's 
that's uh, 3d6 plus 3. Okay, so that's a 6 and a 4 um, as the two highest dice, which makes that a 10 plus my 3 is a 13. Yes. Nice, nice. So I believe, uh, I'm just going to double check on again. I think that means that you both get to ask what's going to happen next. And uh, I will also give you a clue. Um, uh, oh, sorry, sorry. In fact, you get, I get to say what will happen next. You get to ask me why that's going to happen. And then you also get a clue. So yeah, that's cool. So. Um, I think that you get and I'll let you sort of describe how, how this comes through to you in the cards in a moment, but what you learn um, is that there is going to be a revelation this evening, um, a very important revelation um, about the fate of definitely London, maybe the world. And what's more, um, you get the um, you get the feeling that it is uh, linked to your um, to your dealings with the um, well, not with the Whiteley camera itself, but with the entity that you uh, encountered um, at the uh, Society Obscura. Um, you can kind of feel that uh, creature, that creature's presence um, around you almost. Um, and the why uh, uh, this is about to happen um, is, is, as I said, something that was, 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 was um, um, possibly going to be revealed in time, but you know it now, um, is that uh, Lord Falkenberg has taken control of the Whiteley camera um, and he is going to use its power to bring about um, the, uh, to bring about his plan. Um, and it's likely that tonight is kind of when he's going to do his big reveal on that. Uh, you know as well that um, yeah, yeah, whether it again, whether it's just from from your your feelings from the reading, or from um, um, Alessandra's reactions, you know that she is well aware of this, and in fact may well be involved uh, with this. Um, and as for the clue. Um, I think yeah I think that you pull um and, and I don't have the, the 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 necessary knowledge of this myself um to to, to be able to give you the, the what's what's actually the correct one here but I think that you also pull a card that you know is kind of related but not directly related to this and this is in fact a clue for the um the gin lane murders um but you pull a card that shows you that the uh the the um capricorn constellation is somehow related to that uh that threat um I'll just make a note of that. Okay, well, um, um, yeah, I think that, um, yeah, I think that like what's going on is that, um, you know, I'm just pulling the cards and I flip them over one at a time and I just talk through them. And I uh, mentioned that, um, 
here's where I'm gonna bust out my actual tarot knowledge here. I'm gonna just like uh, pull out these cards and the first one that pops up is the magician. And the magician is a card of you know, power and duality. And I say that a very powerful figure is moving through the city. And then I pulled the devil card, which is the uh, represents the evils that are about to come upon us. And then next is the tower, rep which represents cataclysmic uh, destruction on a massive scale. And uh, the next one is the queen of swords who shows that even uh, the crown is not enough to protect London. And then finally, um, the card that I pulled last is uh, the nine of pentacles, which is represented by a figure who is literally holding a falcon. And uh, yeah. And then funny enough, actually, the card for Capricorn is the devil. So I've already pulled that one. So nice, just nice. throw that in there too. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So, so yeah, I do this and I, I rattle off this, you know, like um, interpretation that just, you know, continues to spiral and get darker. And then um, I even look to Madame Volpe and uh, I see that I'm on the right track as I, as I continue to do this. And um, she will kind of nod behind her veil and say, you are as talented as I had heard, child. I see we have yeah. chosen wisely. And I am pleased at your mastery of the cards. Um, she will look down to the deck and she will reach for it and pluck out a single card, uh, which for the moment she holds with, with sort of its, its, um, uh, its back facing you. And she says, Lucian is not destined to be an emperor or a hierophant. He is the sun. And she flips the card around to face you. A golden child who commands the attention of all, the promise of a new day of enlightenment for all. Some are, in, are unsatisfied with living in the shadow of so incandescent a leading light. But then, and she will kind of slip the card back into the deck again, the shadows are where I do my best work. Um, Priyanka. Priyanka taps the, on the, the deck of cards as well and um, you know, cuts the, uh, the cards that we drew back into the deck and says, um, indeed, um, there, are, there are people who need a sun in order to cast their own light and flips over a card and reveals the moon uh, uh, and then, um, but shuffles it back into the deck and says, um, I, however, turn my eyes towards other forms of guidance and then taps it and then flips over the star. Well, we shall see who you follow when this evening is out, I suppose. But she kind of uh, pats you on the, on the back of the hand. I very much hope we may work together at some point in the future, my dear. Um, and then she sort of turns and slips back into the party again. Uh, Priyanka watches her go and um, looks down at the deck and then just flips one more card and says, we shall see which side of the field we each land on. I don't know that I'll be able to work with you in the future, Madame Volpe. And it's the justice, the scales. Nice, nice. Cool, we're, we're at five past now, so I think we'll call a quick break here. So if we come back at about 10 past, um, and then we'll pick things, uh, pick things back up there. So, um, yeah, I think actually what we'll do now is we'll jump into our last unseen for the evening. Um, so I think...
that is. I think it's me. It is, yes. Uh, so, um, yeah. Uh, Kamal pauses in the doorway as he sees two young scholars meeting beneath the statue of Ganymede, one of them nervously clutching a pamphlet of Uranian poetry. Um, as he watches, how do they awkwardly, wordlessly negotiate their assignation? So I think Kamal um, first was made aware of them by the sound of rustling and maybe a, a deep sigh coming from the room where the where some Greek antiquities are, are including the statue of Ganymede. Um, and the statue of Ganymede is like on a plinth and then it's surrounded by circular marble um, uh, kind of a bench upon which the two men are seated, kind of seated. As Kamal watches, um, we see the two men grappling with one another on the stone bench beneath the statue, um, almost as if they were in a wrestling contest. Um, and their muscles strain through their clothing as they kiss forcefully and awkwardly. Um, and then we have this kind of, the camera moves back and forth between Kamal's face and close-ups of, of the two bo the bodies of the two men as we hear grunts and gasps for air, maybe a seam ripping, um, and then a muffled yelp as the two men pull apart momentarily. And the younger man's uh, mouth is bleeding and he wipes at the blood with a grin and his lips are stained purple as if from wine. And his companion blushes and hesitates, but only a moment before renewing his assault. And then Kamal stares on and uh, licks his own lips uh, like a serpent tasting the air. Nice, nice, thank you very much. So, um, Ujisawa, um, you approach uh, the man. Um, said he's he's tall. He's 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 sort of broad shouldered. He's um, as you kind of get close, he's got kind of sandy blonde hair, but his his um, skin is is obviously you know he he's he's obviously um, uh, he's obviously white, but he's got that kind of um, sun and and wind blown uh skin that's kind of leathery almost um in appearance um as you approach he kind of gives a polite uh nod to you uh and says good evening ma'am you know i i haven't been to many art exhibitions in england but it was my impression that people usually stare at the art rather than the other patrons. Personally, ma'am, I always stare at things that interest me. And honestly, I couldn't give two shits about the art here. As you saw, his eyes narrow a little bit. Um, and she's intrigued by that response. Um, she stops a little closer and she's like, I think she has to really look up at this guy. Um, she's uh, very short, even in comparison to uh, someone of, of average height. And he's, he's for his part, is is quite tall. So yeah, there's yeah. definitely a... <laughs> um, what's so interesting about me? And her, her breath smells very slightly of, of whiskey and um i think you possibly just see his 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 nostrils twitch slightly at that but he says honestly i couldn't say but my employer is certainly interested in you and your Companions, Miss uh, Fujisawa, I believe. Your employer. Do you work for Falkenberg? I do indeed. Her name's Baird, Andrew Baird. That's uh, 
Nice to meet you face to face, Miss Fujisawa. I wish I were more excited to meet um, those who are aligned with, with Lord Falkenberg. I'm afraid he hasn't made an excellent first impression on me. Hmm. Not that uh, he cares, of course. That's uh, quite all right, miss. Um, in fact, I suppose you could say I'm here to deal with those people that he doesn't make a good impression on. And uh, he, he gives a smile utterly devoid of humour. I think Kuzisawa returns that same type of smile and she'll say, I, I can understand why your employer might have interest in Hargrave House, but perhaps it would do him well to be warned that we may be an interesting lot, a strange assortment of people, but for the most part, we are very good at our jobs. Oh, I think he is quite aware of that, Miss Fujisawa. I think it's just he you work for, he has the problem with. Now, I hope very much that we might work together in future. But if we do not, then might I get a little, give a little warning of my own? I'm listening. I have all this count of the number of innocents that I've murdered brutally, all in the hollow name of God and the Queen. So you don't want to imagine what I'll do to people who deserve it for a cause that I actually believe in. I think, although um, Fujisawa has this kind of um, unshaken expression on her face that she is uh, trying desperately to maintain, um, she can feel like her heart sort of racing in her chest um, and that like weird kind of prickling feeling of fear rising um because she can hear the the absolute conviction in his voice um whereas her threat knows not quite a bluff um she believes it but not as strongly as he does <laughs> and um i think there's a moment of the strange like sort of chill that um comes on the like immediate area around Fujisawa, almost like a localized breeze that then is suddenly sort of sucked away um leaving this like kind of gust of sweltering heat and i'm imagining that like the way Fujisawa is sort of composed in the the frame of the shot right now like we see the the painting immolation um on the far wall behind her um kind of looming above her head um and the the dark-haired woman pictured in it has begun to sort of look like Fujisawa 
and there's first just like a small lick of flame and then it like the painting itself like self-immolates entirely um kind of just as uh andrew is his name yeah um his uh his threat you know comes to uh I mean, fruition isn't the right word, but when he finishes talking, it's like that's like the moment that this happens. Awesome. Yeah, and I think his eyes um, flick to the painting um, and back to you. Um, I think, you know, you, you, you kind of get the moment as well where his kind of hand. Um, uh, disappears inside his um, his his coat jacket and clearly grasps around something inside, um, but he doesn't make any further further um, threatening moves. But um, yeah, you just get that feeling of of that kind of poise and readiness for action. Um, and I think Fujisawa uses the the moment to um, slip away from from Andrew. Um, and hopefully find one of the other hunters. Excellent. Um, so I think I'm going to go to uh, Lady Camilla. Um, I think um, Uh, you will be um, approached by uh, Darius, who we saw earlier. Um, so yeah, again, just to, just to recap, he's kind of a young man. Um, yes, son of the um, uh, the Iranian ambassador to um, to London. Um, you have seen him it, like clearly. Um, a couple of a couple of the paintings on display here are modelled on him, mm -hmm. um, um, and. But yeah, he will he will approach you. Um and um again we'll kind of give you a polite bow and say, um, I believe that you are uh Lady Camilla, is that correct? Yes, and you are Darius, Lord Falkenberg's latest uh companion. <laughs> And I think that there'd just be a little twitch of his, uh, you know, under his eye at that, um, and say, "Yes, I am." Um, Enjoying the artwork, Darius. Yes, I am a devotee of the arts. Uh, while I am here in this country, um, I. I know that uh, Lucian has some interest in you, um, Lady Camilla, and so I was intrigued to come and meet you and get the measure of you for myself. Well, well met. You have the name of Persian kings. Are you of royal blood? He will kind of cock his head and say, distantly, but yes, um, we are a, I, a noble-born family. I can see it in your bearing. Perhaps that's one of the things that attracts Lucien to you. Perhaps, uh, Lady Camilla, perhaps it is. And what attracts you to Lord Falkenberg? He, he is a man who knows what he wants and is not afraid of getting it. Uh, 
there are too few men like that left in the world, I think. And do you share his ambitions, his desires, the things he wants that he is so determined to get? And I think there's kind of a, again, just a, 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 a kind of shadow crosses his face for a moment and says, he has not made me privy to all of his plans. No, I suppose not. What's that supposed to mean? Lord Falkenberg, I'm sure, has plans within plans. He is a complicated man. You've not known each other very long. Perhaps he will reveal things as time progresses. Yes, I'm sure he will. Ah, uh, that our acquaintance has not been long, I suppose, is, is, is reason for that. But yes, I, I may not know all of the specifics of what he wants, but I can, I can tell that the that um, that the, that desire is there, and that is in and of itself worthy of admiration. So out of character, can I make an information move here to try to see if I can get something out of uh, of Lucien's um, plans from yeah. Elias? Um, I think actually call, we'll call it a you tell me. Um, we'll call it a night move rather than oh, okay. rather than an information move. But yeah, that's that's absolutely cool. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so yeah, uh, and it will be with presence. Um, what are you afraid will, um, will, will, um, uh, happen if this, if you lose your nerve or fail here instead of trying to win him onto your side, or at least get information from him. Get him to trust me. In yeah. Order yeah. To say something about Lucien's plans. Um, uh, I suppose that I'll, I mean, logically, uh, make him an enemy rather than a rather than an informant i think that would be the obvious um fear um when you're trying to <laughs> talk someone up <laughs> that is uh that is fair but i think it's actually worse than that My um <laughs> and and yeah i think that he will um i think that he will uh he will stab you to death here in the hall <laughs> Uh, in in the belief that that will kind of earn him uh, earn him Lucian's trust. I see. Okay. Well, <laughs> he's committed to the cause. <laughs> um, let me just see. I want to see. I never think of, to look at my personal quarters. Oh. Mm. I wonder if there's a way I could use the signet ring inherited from my husband denoting his membership in a secret society um, uh, for the role. Um, uh, maybe it's um, some kind of society that um, uh, the boy's father was a, a member of as well. We don't know the nature of it. Yeah, no, that 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 would make sense. Certainly, I think it's um, he's he certainly moves in kind of aristocratic circles, so it would make sense that yeah, that would would impress oh, him. Old boys club. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, uh, okay. Open. Then I should do three dice. Um... <clears throat> it's gonna be a plus two presence. All right, let's see what happens. All right, so it would be a five and a four is a nine plus two is an 11. Excellent. So um, I'll kind of give you the 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 the, um, the 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 vague description of this now so you can know whether or not you want to spend a mask on this. Um, you will absolutely 
be able to start talking him around and getting him inside with this. Uh, this will give you access to a custom move, um, which which I'll I'll put in um, in in the couch keeper in a moment. Um, so that will happen regardless. Um, if you kind of bump it up to a twelve plus to get the kind of the additional benefit, um, that additional benefit will be a mastermind clue right now on top of that. Um, but um, as I said, you you will be getting uh, you'll be getting a custom move out of this. Uh, you collectively will have access to a custom move um, out of this, regardless with the success there. So that's the win, uh, regardless. And then yeah, if, yeah. If I bump it, then uh, we would also get a mastermind clue. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in addition, and this is a, and, and there's no clues involved uh, related to threats of uh, particular threats, right? It's a custom that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Got it. Um, I don't know how bad do we need mastermind clues. <laughs> I'm feeling a little chintzy around my. Yeah, no, no, that's that's around absolutely my, fair. my mask. Um, these and days. like, <laughs> like I am, I'm not uh, not not going to you know um, the the I'll like I said I'll introduce the customer move properly in a moment, but the customer move specifically is about getting mastermind clues. So okay, don't feel free that you don't feel that you have to if you don't want to. It's uh, I'll stick with the eleven. Then. Yeah, sure, sure. Um. And um, I think he will kind of glance glance towards the stairway where um, uh, Lord, Lord Falkenberg kind of left a few moments ago and say, um, perhaps, Lady Camilla, we might have tea sometime and discuss this further. I, I do not feel it would be appropriate to gossip too freely here of course of course most prudent darius we'll be in touch and she looks about at the doorway as well and drifts off quietly into the crowd <laughs> excellent excellent and i think then um we will go to um uh, to you uh alois as um i think actually what you're gonna find um as you um as you're kind of circulating here um amongst the people um here to view the art um I'm just reminding myself of what we've got here. Cool. Um, yeah, I think that what you will find um, is a. It's just kind of as you're like walking between uh, one place to the other. Um, you're in one of the in in the um, in the hallway between a couple of the rooms, and your eyes will be drawn to. It's just you know again nothing out of the ordinary, but there's just a, a you know a, a rack here, um, with with hooks with various keys and the like um, hanging off of the hooks, but your eyes will be drawn to one um, one hook which has hanging from it. Um, a set of keys um, with a fob on it um, that that just has like a, a, you know cremon gardens inscribed on the uh, on the key fob um, and yes you will have found a set of keys to cremon gardens in in a place that they have no real um, business uh, being in and that is unsurprisingly. Um, a clue for the creature of Crown Gardens. Um, but yeah, um, if you just like to kind of uh, describe kind of how how you how you are when you when you come across these keys and what what your sort of what your reaction is like and, and so on and so forth. Uh, 
uh, I mean, I, I guess you kind of just see him pace back and forth to make sure he's not being observed, and then he just snatches them off the hook and stuffs them in the pocket. Awesome. Awesome. Wait. Perfect. So um, with that, we are going to go to our final um, uh, paint the scene question for the art exhibition. Um, so this is uh, exhibit four which is a set of paintings of utopian scenes. Um, and the paint the scene question for this is, um, what problem of the modern world do you see solved through mystic means? Uh, and, and how is that achieved kind of thing? Um, I will paste again that in the chat. So I have it all for you. Um, and again, feel free to jump in when you have um, a Um, an idea for that. There's a painting of the London skyline uh very similar to the one behind and jose's using as a background actually at uh but instead of a sooty cloudy muggy overcast london it's london in broad daylight with beautiful clean blue skies and the difference here is that uh, the entirety of london has been overtaken by verdant suffocating overgrowth there are no people there are no running no visible trolleys running or anything like that because everything has been tangled up in vines and flowers as if um all of humanity has been eradicated from the city and the uh and nature has claimed it for her own nice nice thank you I think there's a painting of a grand beast hall and the like long mahogany dining table within it around which a colorful and diverse um, cast of characters um, from all walks of life, from all um, strata of society um, are dining together there's you know a servant and or someone that looks like a servant or a lower class person in very modest clothing um being handed a um very expensive bottle of wine by the you know very well-dressed uh fop next to them and the people in this painting particularly the ones that um look to be disadvantaged are smiling and laughing there's a sense of equality um being restored um however if you look at the painting for long enough despite its utopian vision you'll see that those who uh, um are depicted um as most kind of decadent and, and upper class have the strangely like vacant look in their eyes to contrast the sort of lively mirth of the others. 
Awesome. Thank you. Um, I think uh, clearly impoverished uh, families are being brought to a field where uh, fairy-like creatures are, are sowing seeds, which are, are rapidly growing into buildings, homes for these people, but they're you know, uh, picking up occupancy and um, yeah, you can see it's just uh, uh, these buildings are, are just s s stretching up to the clouds. Um, so I'm seeing like a, a, a watercolor in the style of Blake, which was much earlier, but um, and it's people on a stairwell, a stair, a staircase. That's what it is. Um, that's kind of almost ascending upward to the top of the painting, upward into the into the heavens. And at the top of the stairwell is um, a lion that's like brightly, almost like sunlit. Um, and all the people are looking up uh, towards the lion, and you can see at the bottom of the painting. And you can see their hands are open and they've dropped all their um, money, um, coins, wealth, um, uh, um, possessions have all accumulated uh, at the bottom of the painting as they drop them as they climb the staircase to, to reach the epiphany of the lion's presence. Awesome, awesome. So, um, I think this is the point when um, Lord Falkenberg um, has kind of invited you all into the kind of the the, the, the final room of the uh, of the exhibition, as it were, where these uh, utopian paintings are on display. And he kind of, um, he will turn to you and say, ah, I'm so glad you are all here this evening. I have had my eye on the work that you do for some time. And I have been impressed by your knowledge and effectiveness um and he kind of goes over to a, a, a you know part in the wall where there is the kind of the little you know velvet um curtain sort of set up um uh, over over it and uh, he kind of sweeps it aside and frame there are a couple of prints um that like photographic prints um they, they're on you know they, they look fairly standard for um photographs of this era kind of thing but the views that they depict are of nothing you've ever seen before they, they're these kind of um statuesque buildings um some of which kind of have have a resemblance to some of what's in the in the art around you um and uh, he will say with the aid of the Abernathys, I believe I have found a way of bringing a better future to this land, maybe even the world as a whole. I have long believed that all that is required to change the world is a vision of what that future could be 
and the will to bring it about. And now I can share that vision with all and we can bring that future about together. And that is why I wanted you all here this evening. I wanted to give you the opportunity to work with me, to transform this land into a better place, to sweep away the muck and the corruption that clogs this city, this country, to sweep away all that stands between us and achieving a brighter future ruled over by the enlightened in which all will be free and the petty tyrannies of modern life are done away with. And he kind of looks between you all and says, so, my friends, will you join me on this path? And who will rule in this ideal platonic republic of yours, Lord Falkenberg? Those with the will and the vision to do so, of course, Lady Camilla. Those best suited to rule. A meritocracy, then. Indeed, if you would call it such. And you will be the one, no doubt, to establish the merit of each contender. I would think of myself more as a midwife, I suppose, birthing this new era. I have no inherent desire to rule over it once it comes about. I, though, will be the one to ensure that it does. And our role, should we choose to join you? <laughs> what exactly do we paint in this picture? Are we your servants as the catalyst of the revolution? Your colleagues? We can only achieve our goal through the manipulation of the mystical powers of the land and he will kind of nod to Priyanka um, and say Miss Balakwa for a start is a mystic of unparalleled ability and the rest of you all have knowledge beyond that of the average man on the street, as it were. We need those with your talents, with your knowledge, to help um, to help bring this new future about.
and she uh, so and then uh, he will turn to the others of you and say so what do you think can you see a future working with me bringing this design to fruition And what about those of us who spot the flaws in your design, who think the styles are not right for what you're trying to achieve? I will listen to your counsel, of course. There is no point in allowing arrogance to cloud one's vision. Priyanka. But I do think the time to begin this is soon. This country has labored under the shackles of oppressors for far too long already. What's the vibe of the room? Like, are we like the four odd people out from like a whole crowd of true believers or? No, this this is basically just uh, just you in the room. Um, may, may, maybe um, um, uh, the, the two direct followers, so um, uh, Baird and uh, Volpe uh, are probably in the room as well. But it, it, this is this is definitely a uh, an appeal to Hargrave House itself. This isn't a kind of a general address. Uh, then Priyanka probably stands up and has, you know, set the set their champagne foot down and says, once again, I find myself in astonishment to be listening to yet another Englishman tell the rest of the world how they should live. You speak so broadly, Lord Falkenberg, of how uh, the shackles of society have you know, imprisoned you from advancing your grand designs, and yet you are privileged beyond anyone else in this room. You, who have everything that you could possibly want, who can exert your will over everyone you could possibly choose to. You, who your people come to other countries and raid and pillage and take whatever you want. And yet you seem to think that you deserve more. And you seem to think that you can take it. Has the world and history shown you that you have not received enough? I am aware of what my fellows have done, Priyanka. I, I assure you, you are not aware of anything. <laughs> I assure you that you do not know the tragedies that have been put upon people in your name, in the name of your empire. I assure you that any kind of game that any of us must play where you are the one setting the rules will fundamentally be a game that is stacked against all of us. I do not think, nor do I have any interest in helping you realize yet another permutation of the existing status quo. More so, there are plenty of people and plenty of other groups who have tried and failed before you. I have experience in that as well. I think at this point, like, she like, leans forward as, as, as has probably been brandishing a finger at Falkenberg this entire time and has completely forgotten themselves and uh, stumbles a bit. I think Fuzisawa at your side will um, study 
Miss Blackwell. She doesn't say anything, but she has like um, a sort of fierceness in her eyes that uh, that shows that she's in complete agreement with everything Miss Blackwell has said. Believe me, I also want to see those of my class, those who have inherited our power, removed from it. It is what sent me down this path, Priyanka. I hope that you will reconsider and join me. I truly believe that together we can make this world a better place. I think at that point I turn to the others and I say, I may be assured that my recommendations carry some weight here. I have foreseen that these plans will lead to destruction. I have foreseen that they will wreak havoc upon the very society that we have all sworn ourselves to protect, flawed though it may be. I think there is nothing here but empty promises and childish dreams. Thank you for your hospitality, Lord Falkenberg, but I believe it is far too late at night and I find myself rather ill, if you'll excuse me. Well, I'm speechless. Miss Priyanka has said everything that I might say myself, and were better. <laughs> and Lady Camilla turns on her heel and walks with Priyanka. <laughs> Um, Fujisawa follows, but not before um, turning to give a hard look at um, Andrew, who I assume is standing somewhere near Lord Hoffenberg. Yeah, he's, he's sort of leaning up against the wall. Um, I think he's, he, he's, he's not a subtle man. I think he is kind of uh, grooming his um, fingernails with like a a, like a, um, a a cookery uh, blade. It's it's um, yeah. I said not a subtle man. Yeah, of course he is. <laughs> <laughs> and I think. Um, uh, as the others are starting to leave, um, uh, Falkenberg will turn to you, Eloise, and say, And how about you, Professor? Is this not what you have always dreamed for? Will you not work with me? I'm just trying to, we, we only know that the camera is involved with this. Was there going to be some demonstration that he was going to make or? Uh, the photographs he demonstrated were clearly like of a, um, of another world as it were. Oh, okay. uh, so yeah, that, that is, 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 it's clear that those are, um, or at least it, it's clear to someone who, who knows of the camera that these are, yeah, they, 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 they are of, um, Um, okay, then what are your plans for ne Penelope Levy? Has she been sacrificed already? 
who? She was lost to the Watley camera. I do not believe I know of her. And I guess we see the care that you will take with your power. So I'll turn and follow the rest of them. Nice, nice. Awesome. So we'll take another quick break there and, and again come back at 10 past. Um, and then we will um, we'll kind of wrap up. Um, I'll, I'll give a chance if anyone wants to have like a kind of a last uh, scene all together and then we'll but then we'll we'll kind of wrap up and, and move into the, the usual flow of things. But yeah, uh, thank you very much, everyone. I'll see you all in a few minutes. So yeah, um, I guess yeah. I will I will throw it over to you all um, first because I know we don't often get you know have ex explicit moments for these. But um, if um, if people do want to have kind of just a um, a brief moment together as you all kind of get back to Hargrove House that evening to kind of discuss what's transpired, then uh, feel free to do so. I mean, if you're not interested, that's that's also cool. And we'll just we'll just roll into the. Uh, roll into the dawn phase but yeah if you do or want a, a moment to um to sort of go over things then then i am cool with that whatever was the point of that performance he couldn't have believed that we were suddenly going to join him in his madness he was doing no such thing he was just trying to warm us up and to tell us that he has the camera those photographs, I saw similar things when I had a brief brush with disaster the other night. The camera in his hands is not in our favor, obviously. But he's tipped I his believe, hand. <laughs> I believe Madame Volpe thinks that he is going to succeed. She also asked me to join them. It is unfortunate though, because Madame Volpe comes from a particular branch of magic that is uh, quite different from my own background. Well, if I may, I, I do believe that we have many advantages over Lord Falkenberg and his ilk. One of which being that, Lady Camilla, you know quite a lot about the young Lord, do you not? I do, about his family, for that is for certain. And he and I have seen each other over the years. I knew he was intelligent but not reckless and revolutionary he he plans to sow chaos in the society and i suspect he's already begun yes i'm sure he has but families tend to hide many skeletons Perhaps there's something useful to you and his background. And of course, I don't mean to speak out of turn. No, your opinion is most welcome, Fujisawa. Attempting to reach Lucien through his family is an interesting tack. He will expect a frontal assault after this revelation. Perhaps we can be more circumspect. I did see a conflagration with a painting while you were talking to the very large man. Everything all right in that uh, regard, Fujisawa? 
Um, Fujisawa makes eye contact with Lady Camilla in that moment, and you can see very clearly that everything is not all right. <laughs> um, least of which is that her Fujisawa's head is pounding right now as the uh, the effects of the alcohol begin to add. Um, but she just gives a kind of demure smile and, and nods. Yes, of course. Why wouldn't it be? And you, Eloise, what do you make of Lord Falkenberg's spectacle for us? Seems If he if he genuinely thought he could recruit us. Delusional enough to believe the things he's saying. And if that was just a tactic, then maybe it's even worse. I wonder how many of the threats we are currently encountering, he has a hand in in some way. Clearly he was after the camera all along. He's beat us to it in that regard. Individually, all of these threats, you hope they'll be manageable, but he's multiplying them all together. That would be my fear. We've been on the back foot, I believe, my colleagues, reacting to his provocations over and over again. It's time to be more proactive. Take the fight to him. He likes to play puppet master from the shadows. From now on, we'll make that more difficult for him. I feel like that's where the commercial break would happen, or the credits <laughs> would roll at that moment. <laughs> we don't sleep Absolutely. now. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, awesome. That was that was great. So uh, we're going to quickly roll into our dawn phase. Um, so uh, dawn phase. So collect rewards if a threat was resolved. Um, it was not this time, but I will take this opportunity to point out. Um, I have added to the moves tab uh, a new move that you have 
um, from uh, uh, recruiting uh, Darius to your cause, or at least preparing to recruit Darius to your cause. Uh, you have a new move called The Lessons of Eurydice. Uh, when you make a um, an investigation move by consulting with Darius, um, you can state which threat you are investigating and ask how you uh, and um, well, you say how you believe it features in Lucian's plans. Um, when you make that roll, you will gain a mastermind clue on any hit uh, alongside your regular clue, um, and you mark one of the boxes below. There are three of them. Um, if you get a 12+, plus, uh, you don't gain an additional mastermind clue, but you don't mark one of the boxes. So, so it kind of essentially extends it out a little. Um, so that's uh, that move is now available to you if you want to uh, kind of keep checking in on Darius and getting information from him. Um, also... The boxes are just the number of times we can use this. Mode. That's that's correct. Yep. Um, the other uh, the other thing, I'm just going to double check and make sure that I am speaking correctly. Uh, I think that you now, yes, indeed. Um, so. Um, from this point onwards, um, because kind of, um, even though you have uh, turned down his, uh, Lucian's offer, um, he may occasionally uh, call on you and ask him, uh, and call on any of you and ask, uh, ask you to do him a favour. Um, you uh, can each, um, basically every, every dawn phase, um, if you can answer uh, the question, have I aided Lucian in his plans? You may mark an, an, an additional uh, point of XP. Um, though he has not yet made any requests of you, but that is kind of on the table now. Um, but speaking of uh, questions, um, actually, I think first, I just want to double check that we don't. Yeah, no, so yeah, cool. So we'll we'll do our Dawn questions now. Um, so yeah, um, yes, indeed. I believe you did all answer a question, uh, and it's going back two weeks now. But um, um, uh, I think we did the. I can't remember whether it was a creature of Cremon Gardens. No, it was the. Um, it was the. Uh, Jinlin Murders, I believe, who answered last time, and um, the first question on that about the. Uh, whether it was planned or or uh, random. Um, you didn't resolve a threat, so um, you don't get that one. Um, but yeah, so um, Lady Camilla, uh, did you experience an echo in the night? Yeah, I think the the wine stained lips and the um, the muscle straining and the um, wrestling were both echoey. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I feel that's uh, that's fair. Um, did you have a face-to-face -face encounter with a mastermind? Well, yeah, I mean, that's that's a fairly <laughs> obvious one for this session. <laughs> More than one, in fact. But uh, <laughs> uh, And did you use your loyalty to Her Majesty to justify your brutal actions? I was thinking that this one was um, back in the museum um, with the conversation with Priyanka mm. when I, um, uh, she was justifying, um, Lady Camilla was justifying the pillage of, of other cultures. Yep, Good. that's You're brutal. <laughs> that's that's very fair. That's very fair. Awesome, thank you. Uh, so yeah, Fujisawa, uh, did you experience an echo in the night? Yeah, I seem to recall narrating something about wrestling or fighting last time, although I don't remember the specifics. That that, that is very fair. It's, it's like it's been two weeks, so uh, so I, I I'm going to be generous in that one anyway. But yeah, that that sounds good. Uh, did you subtly express sexual desire for your employer in the way you dressed them or served them? I think in the scene from last time when um, Fujisawa was getting jealous about Lord Falkenberg uh, arranging a meeting with, uh, with Priyanka. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and did you ensure your employer got credit for your triumphs? I don't think I had any triumphs to, to take that before. Um, so no. <laughs> that, that's fair. That's fair. Um, uh, and uh, Priyanka, did you experience an echo in the night? 
Yes, I uh, remember a freeze that I had said specifically to mirror something that happened earlier in the episode. So yeah, that's that's cool. That's cool. Um, did you cancel someone using your supernatural affinities as the basis for that advice? Yes, I told everyone to be aware because I'm a psychic. Yeah, that's that's fair. And did you perform a ritual again? That, that, that's a, a fairly obvious one there. So that's that's cool. Uh, awesome, thank you. Um, and Eloise, did you experience an echo in the night? No, I don't think so. No, whereas, um, yeah, no, no. If you, if you, if you don't think so, that's fine. I, I said, again, I, I, I will freely admit I'm, I'm struggling to remember the precise details of the last time, but yeah, that's, that's no worries if, uh, if you think not. Um, did you watch someone you were interested in from afar? I did that one. Um... Cool. Um, I remember who it was. I think it was last time. So. Yeah, was it the um, the well, it was, was it the actor? I think wasn't it the um, yes that was last time, wasn't it? Yeah, um, yeah, that was that was last time for yeah, for, cool, for cool. As well. yeah. Um, and did you allow someone to talk down to or dismiss you? I don't remember any specific. I'm trying to think. I'm going to say maybe the, I, I, I can't, again, I can't remember the exact details, but I have a feeling in that conversation between you and yeah. Nathaniel and, and um, uh, Darius, there might have been something, but like I said, I, I'm happy for you to mark that because it, it, it's kind of ringing a bell for that. But like I said, it's been it's been a couple of weeks, so uh, <laughs> I, I know certainly my memory is a little uh, a little hazy. Uh, cool. Um, so next, um, yeah, obviously, if you want to update your dawn questions for next time, um, feel free to do so. Can I ask a quick question? Uh, yeah, by all means. Um, I just filled up my XP track and my last possible advancement is to unmark everything in my personal quarters. However, I only have one thing marked at the moment. Uh, would you be okay with me thinking I'm, that for later? I'm, I'm happy for you to just, yeah, sit on that until you want to, uh, to, to kick it off. As, as you said, it's, it's your last one anyway. So, um, yeah, but by all means, feel free to kind of sit on that for now. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, no worries. Um, and um, yeah, uh, does anyone have any playbook moves or custom moves that resolve in the dawn phase? Um, oh, we, memory of the servant is yes, that's that's now, isn't it? Yes, um, I think that at some point of the exhibition, Fujisawa found um, on the floor like perhaps lost by by one of the patrons, um, a ring with the um, like kind of gold falcon uh, yeah. logo. Um, but this one has a compartment for poison or some other liquid. Um, and I'm going to give that to Eloise. Cool. Awesome. And um, finally, unless anyone else has any Dawn moves that I've missed, um, did we have any outstanding Janus masks? Again, I don't think we did, but if if anyone wants to uh, um, correct me on that, then then feel free. Awesome. So, um, with that, uh, oh, I'm just going to remove my uh, covered up clue for the camera. Ah, yes, sure thing. Um, awesome. 
otherwise. Cool. So uh, with that, we will move into our day phase. So the camera is no longer an active threat, right? That's correct. The, the camera is no longer an active threat. It is, in fact, now one of the mastermind servants, um, which soon uh, we'll, we'll be able to kind of start taking uh, active opposition against you um, if uh, uh, if he so chooses. Uh, oh, I will also mention that I have added um, a, an additional mastermind clue um, to the the list of mastermind clues, which is um, a, a shining vision of the future, um, because the mastermind literally showed that to you. So, you know, it seems only fair. <laughs> uh, awesome. Um, so... With that, yeah, we're going to go into our day phase. So the, firstly, I will uh, introduce our new threat because we're down to two again. Um, this threat will be the Satanic Mill. So, um, Aggie McClintock, dressed in a simple working smock dusted with flour, makes an appeal to the residents of Hargrave House. I don't know whether you can help me, but no one else can. My boy Georgie, he was a grease monkey at the Bolstrode, Bolstrode Works in Battersea. You know them, they make guns and cannons and the like. They said he was killed by one of the pressers, paid for the funeral, but never let me see the body. Only I spoke with some of the other barons who work there. They said he was hurt, but not killed. It was supposed to be going to the hospital. It doesn't add up. So I did some digging. The number of weans that have died there are just gone missing. That's unbelievable. And I don't. I've been to the coppers. They're as much use as a chocolate fire guard. I've gone to my MP, but no one seems to do anything. I heard, though, that you look into strange tales and goings-on, goings and this is strange. I've lost hope at this point. I've ever seen my Georgie again. I just want to know what happened to him and to make sure no one has to go through what I have. So, will you? Or whether you quake in fear at Sir Archibald's name too. So the Bulstrode Works are an armaments factory operated by Sir Archibald Bulstrode, um, a supremely wealthy industrialist in Battersea. It's an impoverished industrial area of the city, uh, and it's not uncommon for young children to work and indeed die in its many factories. But if the numbers Aggie has provided are even near accurate, the rate of death in the Bulstrode works is well beyond even the most grimly acceptable rates for workplace accidents. So I think I'm going to address this to, and I'm just going to double check over people's masks again. Cool. So um, Fujisawa, um, with your connection, um, as we've discussed before, to the the um, uh, the spirits and spiritual forces of the city, um, what lets you know that, or how how do you feel that um, the that that this factory, um, or or the the man who runs it. Uh, perhaps um, is feeding on the spirits of the um, uh, of the 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 children that die in this place. Oh, what a grim question! <laughs> I think it's that. For those who are sensitive to spirits, um, there's a sort of um, kind of constant chatter around London that sensitive people learn to eventually tune out. 
um, because if you didn't, it would be too much. Um, just because people you know, die everywhere in the city in many horrible ways. Um, but Fujisawa has discovered that in the vicinity of this factory, that chatter of the spirits is noticeably absent. It's um, disturbingly quiet, despite the, the deaths that she knows have occurred here. Um, which can only mean that um, their spiritual energy, their spiritual essence is being used up somehow. Cool, thank you. Okay, brilliant. So thank you very much. So yes, um, this uh, we will be um, investigating uh, the um, yes, the the, the 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 satanic mill, the the murders at the uh, um, at the Bulstrode Works. Um, so for this one, um, there are two questions. Um, uh, both of these are a kind of straightforward resolving threat questions. Um, the first question is, how are the deaths at the Bulstrode works being covered up? And who is aiding Sir Archibald in doing so? That is a complexity eight question. Um, and that will give you the opportunity to alienate Sir Archibald from his supporters uh, and bring him to justice or administer it yourself with no severe consequences. Um, the second question is, um, uh, how, um, how does the, how do the, um, sorry, I'll rephrase this. This is one I'm, I'm still kind of writing. So I'm just trying to nail down the questions in there at the minute, but, um, uh, the, the question on this one is, yeah, how, um, um, kind of how do you, uh, how do you see the, uh, the, 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 the factory is dedicated to Moloch and what boons does his protection grant? That is a question with a complexity of four, um, that will give you the opportunity to, um, uh, storm the factory, destroying it and its owner, though obviously to do so you will have to overcome both the mundane guards and whatever supernatural protection is offered by Moloch to do so. Um, so those are your two options. Um, I will um, add all of that to the uh, to the threat sheet in a moment. Um, but for the time being, um, I'm going to ask um i'll go and reverse courage keeper order this time um and ask uh, alois what would you like to get up to during the day phase today Well, I guess I just got a key to Kremlin Garden, so it's as good a reason as any to <laughs> go looking into that so we can maybe get that one wrapped up. Uh, what exactly is he doing? Yeah, yeah, that sounds. I mean, I get. I mean, I guess you can kind of use a clue to as a, you know, not necessarily using it to solve something, but maybe just. He's using it to open some doors and sculpt around where he's not supposed to be. That, absolutely, yeah, no, that absolutely, sense. that's cool. Uh, brilliant, yeah, no, that's cool. Thank you. Um, and um, yeah, Priyanka. I I'm drawing a blank right now, but um, if I were to spin out some ideas, I think that probably um, maybe a, um, so I have I have a, a condition that is, um, you know, owe a debt to the man in the sun mask. And mm -hmm. so I'd like to maybe resolve that. So maybe there's a meeting that I could have with the man in the sun mask to uh, kind of like put that forward or um, find a way to resolve it. I already have a permanent, condition and so as long as that one's hanging out I have, I have like one precondition slot um and so I, I i think i'd like to resolve that 
actually. Yeah, no, absolutely. That sounds good. That sounds good. We can yeah work. We can work that out and see how that goes. Awesome, thank you. And um, Fujisawa. Um, I think uh, I would like to have a scene with Priyanka, perhaps a you know dressing, getting ready scene before they go out to see the the man in the sun mask, um, and then after that. Um, I don't quite know yet what I want to do after that. That's cool. That's cool. We we like I said we'll we'll probably do do a couple of scenes now, uh, then wrap up for the evening and pick up next time so we can, uh, you know, if you have any thoughts between now and then, we can always do that next time. That's that's not a problem. Uh, awesome. Thank you. And Lady Camilla. Okay, so I'm also feeling a little stumped, but um, uh, I'm wanting to do something with the Jin Lane murders. Um, so we're trying to figure out who the mastermind behind the cult is and what they're planning. Um, oh no, if there is a pattern... Oh, the spirit is acting under. You're right. So there is yeah, a cult, yeah. and there is a mastermind of the cult, and they are. Um, uh, that's what we established last time. That they yeah, are. Yeah, that's that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah sorry. It. Yes, I, I didn't recap on on what, yeah. what where we are with things, but that's right. Yeah, you've just determined that someone is directing the the possessing spirit that's committing the Jin Lane murders. Uh huh. And so um, I'm wondering, um, and the people involved in that one are. Them, yeah, Peggy. members of a cult to Dionysus <laughs> is the is the is who's behind it. You you know that much for certain. Um, mm. The yeah. So, what is the connection to Nathaniel Bywater? He had a connection to Alois, right? Um, uh, he invited Alois to. That's, that's the correct. Um, certainly, out of character, you you you, you it, it is quite obvious. So, though you you may actually because. Um, Alois has been kind of keeping that one uh, on the download, but yeah, he's he's oh, totally he's a member of the cult. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about about Nathaniel. Okay, okay, I don't know about the Reverend. Okay, um, but uh, yeah, yeah, um, no, it's on. on like I said, yeah, it, it, you know, from an out of cult perspective, yeah, he is absolutely a member of the cult. Uh, that's um... okay, um, and then okay. I'm not sure what I could do. Well, maybe um, I could go with Alois to Cremor Gardens um, and uh, with his set of keys and join him on that. Um, uh, looking about two heads is better than one, right? <laughs> yeah, no, that sounds good. That sounds good. Um, awesome. Um, so I think actually I'm just going to call a quick uh, five minute break now because I need to get some more water. Um, but then we'll do just like a kind of a quick round of scenes each. Uh, then we'll wrap up for the evening and um, we'll we'll pick up uh, next time. So, yeah, uh, see you all in a few minutes time. Awesome. Uh, so. Um, I have to remind myself what people want to do. Yes. Yeah, so um, <laughs> um, I think we will start with. Um, Pujasara, I think you said you wanted to have a scene with um, uh, Priyanka before before she heads out to her uh, meeting. So I think, yeah, that probably makes sense for us to start off there. Sure. Um, so I think that um, the timing of Fujisawa's morning routine today is is quite off, which happens extremely rarely. Like she's a full seven minutes late to get to Priyanka's quarters um, to help them dress uh, for the day. Um, and when she does arrive, um, it's not that she looks disheveled, it's just um, she looks paler than usual. You can see that she's got little dark circles under her eyes, like she didn't sleep well. Um, her head is thrumming. Um, and she is dead silent, um, not even really trying to make polite conversation um, as she you know, brushes Priyanka's hair, 
puts it up and the ornaments and things that they like, etc. And um, Fuji, oops, go ahead. Fujisawa, though you are not usually a woman of many words, I find you especially absent of them today. Are you uh, unmoored by the events of last night or simply by, or are you simply um, bedeviled by spirits? As you saw, it makes a very quick, um, almost alarmed eye contact with uh, Priyanka in the mirror, and then uh, swiftly looks away. Um, I suppose it's more so that it's sinking in how much more interaction we're to have with Lord Falkenberg. Um, when he approached you at the exhibition before his big announcement, were you flirting with him? I think that um, Priyanka's eyes shoot open um, and uh, it quickly like turns away from Fujisawa, um, and you can tell by the reaction that they were caught, um, that, that, is, that you were exactly right. So there's, there's no beguiling out of that situation. But what Priyanka says instead is, you seem to forget yourself, Fujisawa. The uh, comings and goings of your employer are not yours to question or to interrogate. Yes, um, I, I know. I'm sorry. I, you're right. I've I've forgotten myself. It's. Um, I just didn't think he was your type. Once again, Fujisawa, I must strongly advise you against such assumptions. They are far beyond the considerations of what my lady's maid should be pursuing. Without thinking, um, and I think like Priyanka has barely finished their sentence um, before Fujisawa says, or what? And then she like almost like, she physically like covers her mouth after she says that. <laughs> <laughs> I think at that point that elicits like an actual gasp from Priyanka and they um they rise and they say that will be all I shall not need any more assistance this morning please see to it that you regain your composure by this evening we, we will not be we will not revisit um if you can do so we will pretend that this conversation never happened Fujisawa's lip trembles. Um, she knows that she has far overstepped her boundaries here and she's like trying to keep herself together in the face of, of her employer's anger. Um, and she says in this like little, almost trembling voice, yes, I'll, I'll, then I'll see you later. Um, enjoy your meeting with the man in the sun mask. And she'll turn heel and, and get out as quickly as she can. As soon as the door is closed, Priyanka will go across the room and turn the bolt and um, like 
put their back against the door and just a hand will come up to their lips and they will be there's a there's an ambiguity there about whether it's anger or it's something else awesome thank you very much uh awesome so yeah um with that i think we'll um hop over to Cremon gardens as uh Alois goes there to investigate so um again i will just quickly recap on Cremon gardens because it's been a little while since we've been there just just so you kind of have a uh an idea of the place um so yeah the uh this is a pleasure gardens um uh in chelsea near the river uh, obviously near Cheney Walk, where you were last night. Um, there are a number of kind of um, like sideshow type booths and all that sort of thing here. There's there's big manicured gardens. There's a hedge maze. Um, there's a bowling saloon. Um, there's a big pagoda with a sort of dancing platform in it. There's a big banqueting hall. Uh, obviously, things like the banqueting hall and the dancing uh, dancing platform in the pagoda um are a little quieter during the day uh they tend to get busier at night but there are people around here during the day as well uh there are plenty of people who have uh, have time for leisure um here um yeah obviously you have kind of the um the keys to to get into some of the uh um uh backstage areas as it were um uh as you see fit um Alois, but yeah, um, uh, is there anywhere in particular you want to go and um, anything you want to do? Just looking for any description oh yeah and just to recap on the actual um threat itself as well uh because we did we have answered one of the um the threshold question for it uh you have determined that this is a hoax uh someone is um so the the the, the um what you are looking to find out is who perpetrates the hoax and why um, and then you can kind of lay a, a, a trap for the perpetrator and unmask them. Um, the the couple of keys you had before picking up this, the cup, sorry, the couple of clues you had before picking up this key, both kind of implied sailors uh, in what was going on from um, your your questions or from Lady um, uh, Lady Camilla's questions to. Um, Jenny Johnson, but um, but yeah, sorry, uh, but yeah, carry on. So I, I realised again, it's been a little while since we've had a, a proper look at the creature. So uh, so I'd uh, remind you of where we were at. Yeah, I mean, I don't I'm looking through all the description and stuff. I don't see anything that really jumps out. So just just getting into the you know back into the private areas. Just. Yep, sneak around. Awesome. Yeah, that sounds good. In which case, I will ask you to um, uh, to make me a an investigation uh, move with composure. I think as you're you're focusing on sneaking around here. What? No, no one has made use of the Dutch courage, so I think it's just been too long without it going. So I think we see Alice is maybe a bit nervous. His composure is not that great. So you just see him pull out a flask, which is not something we've seen him do before, and, and just. Before uh, 
Yeah, and maybe he hesitates a, a, for just a moment before when he goes to put that key in and decides for a little uh, liquid courage. Awesome, awesome. So uh, yes, you have to take the um, uh, the condition wild oh. abandon, um, and f whilst whilst you still have that condition, uh, your vice is considered to be intoxicants rather than what it is normally. Uh, but you do get to make this roll with advantage. So a bit extra courage and you know if you get caught wandering around where you're not supposed to be some alcohol in your breath and just acting confused it doesn't it, hurt it, exactly exactly that did not help much not enough that's a five. <laughs> oh, okay so um i think um I think that what will happen um, is... Is it, it Pettigrew? I'm expecting Pettigrew. Hmm. Oh, no, wait. Oh, yeah, sorry. No, I was, yeah, sorry. I, I was just like, I don't know the way it's showing seven, but yes, because it's, it's adding all, all three dice together. Um, no, I think actually what it is um, um, is that uh, you're kind of looking... Um, in one of the um, uh, one of the backstage um, areas, um, when a large uh, a large man, um, he's dressed in overalls, um, he. Is tall, broad-shouldered. Um, he's got a huge blonde beard um, and a thick Swedish accent. Um, not that you hear much of that um, as 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 you're um, kind of sneaking uh, into this, um, uh, like behind one of the the, the exhibits. Um, he sort of comes in, um, kind of looks. Uh, looks you up and down. Um, he's kind of got, uh, you know, a bundle of stuff in his hands, um, and he says, "What are you doing here?" And um, uh, I think, without even thinking about it, he's going to kind of, um, you know, he's going to throw a punch um, and knock you unconscious. Um, and I think you're going to find yourself. Um, probably dragged out of the place. Um, I don't think handed over to the police at this stage, but you are going to be kind of um, assaulted and and ejected from the premises. Okay. Yeah, I, I, are, you, are you cool with that happening? Yeah, I think I'll just that's, yeah, that that, that's 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 fair. That's fair. Um, so I think you can take the condition. Um, uh, we'll just call it battered, and um, yeah, you will. Um, you'll you'll probably come to um, a little a little while later. Um, I think, in fact, down in the in the um, uh, the, the 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 muddy sand of the. Um, uh, of the uh, river embankment, um, uh, the, you know, um, as uh, um, with with your head reeling um, from from the uh, uh, from the attack, and um, we'll come around to you, um, Lady Camilla, and I think just for that kind of cinematic moment, we kind of. Um, uh, cut to um, the scene of, of you, you know, someone taking a, a ferocious right hook to the face uh, in the boxing ring and someone <laughs> ringing the bell as uh, <laughs> as we come into the scene with you. And I have an idea. Uh, so um, uh, 
so we see the the ferocious uh uh exchange of blows and the blood spat splatter and in the background we see lady camilla speaking to the manager of uh of, of the boxing ring and we can't hear what she's saying um uh but she passes him you know um uh some coin and um and then we see him write down something on a note of paper and give it to her and then the camera shows it and it says sean o'sullivan uh um bunch of grapes and um uh, uh lady camilla's eyebrow goes up and the next scene we see is lady camilla entering a, the pub uh the bunch of grapes um from the gin later murders and um and uh sean the brawn o'sullivan is um uh, uh the barkeep um and so she comes up to the bar and she sits down and um she says uh mr sullivan is it that it is ma'am can i uh, get you anything there Let's see, is it too early for a whiskey? <laughs> Not if you'll permit me to uh, join, you in, uh, join you in one as well, uh, ma'am. Please do. Um, and yeah, he'll, he'll pour, um, pour two drinks and, and uh, uh, push one across the bar to you. <laughs> Cheers, Mr. Sullivan. Yeah, he'll. <laughs> he'll, he'll clink glasses with you. I had the honor of witnessing your bout with the Limehouse, the terror of the terror of Limehouse. I can't even remember his name. He was so ineffectual against your blows. I was very impressed by your uh, capabilities. I didn't have you down for a. Uh... Uh, an aficionado of uh, the uh, pu pugilistic arts, uh, ma'am. But um, uh, thank you. It's um, nice to nice to have your uh, talents appreciated. <laughs> yes, I do love the environment, the passion that people bring to the sport. And she sips her um, uh, whiskey a little bit more. And I do appreciate. A strong man. <laughs> uh, indeed. So, um, as uh, as that what you're here looking for, uh, ma'am? In fact, it is Sean the Braun, if you don't mind me calling you that. Ah, uh, yeah. I don't mind. Uh, I don't mind at all, uh, ma'am. I'm looking for someone who's open to a little night work. Aye, someone, uh, someone causing your problems, is that? You might say that. It's almost in the form of a bodyguard, perhaps, if that's something that you would be open to. I might be traveling in dangerous circles, and I might need a strong man to protect me. I could pay you well. Well, in that case, I think I could, uh, I could probably uh, help you up, ma'am, if uh, if um, if that's what you need. Oh, I'm so glad you said yes, Mr. Sullivan. I think we're going to have fun together. I do have a question, though. Isn't this where there was that grisly murder? What was her name? Peggy Onions, was that her name? Tossed oh, apart recently. Oh, I, that was um, a nasty business that I, I don't for the for life of me know what happened there. I mean, the actual 
killing happened out in the uh, out in the street there. I I knew the uh, the two of them, uh, you know, to to nod to. I mean, they 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 came in here fairly regular. I mean, I've I've this is just one of the gigs I work, but um, no, that was uh, yeah, terrible business. Um, I I don't know what uh, what caused them to to get in such a scrap that they that she beat the living daylights out of her like that. I mean, well, you know what I uh, I, I do when I'm not waiting bars. I mean. I know what it takes to kill a man with your bare hands. It's uh, it's not quick and it's not easy. I mean, unless you get unlucky. I was told she was a slight woman, and yet she tore her friend to pieces. Apparently, if the rumors are to be told or to be believed. Yeah, and I think I'm going to ask for an investigation role here with a um. Uh, with presents again, I think, probably. All right, here we go. Tell me, Sean. Da, 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 da. Okay. Ooh, that was not, did not go well. <laughs> <laughs> Let me think in this case. Well, oh, you narrate first before I just I decide about a mask. Yeah, so... Um, I think I don't know, have a quick look. Yeah, no worries. So I think um as as you sort of ask the question, um Sean has has kind of just been like um holding the glass of um of, of whiskey up until this point um you know just just you know <laughs> as he's been chatting to you um and i think he will knock the uh, knock the whiskey back um he swallows but as he puts the glass down you can see a um his eyes look unfocused as he as if he's a lot more drunk than he ought to be, um, uh, given what he's drunk. And he is going to lunge across the bar and um, try and grab hold of you. <laughs> Ouch. All right, that's worth a mask <laughs> to avoid. <laughs> uh, let me see what masks do I have. Um... I haven't taken any future ones. Um, I'll try the darkened threshold since we're talking about violence so much right now. <laughs> sure, sure. So that'll bring it up to at least a success with condition with uh, with uh, cost. <laughs> yeah, cool. So um, I think that he is going to um he sort of he's gonna like look look over his shoulder almost just just to sort of um kind of check on um what was um as if you know to see if like the uh, the, the boss is, is is around sort of thing and then he turns to you and says now i don't know if that's related at all um yeah you know it's it's probably nothing i mean from when i heard that was just a freak freak occurrence uh, and all but we had reports that night of um some of the gin we had in tasting strange, not bad strange, but 
something wrong with it. After our shift, the um, landlord made us pour out a whole case of gin um, out into the drain out back. Um, uh, I maybe there was something wrong with it. Maybe that that led to what happened. I I don't think it's likely at all. But that's uh, um, that's the only thing that everything else that night was just normal, you know, lively and all, but uh, normal. Um, so yeah, the the clue you get is um, uh, adulterated drink. Um, uh, and and basically, the complication is that that they they don't actually have any of it left because they tipped it all away. But it tipped them all the way. Yeah, got it. Very helpful, Sean. Thank you so much. And then she she oh uh, she hands him uh, her card, which of course she has, and she says, "Come by Hargrave House tonight for that night work." Actually. Come by a bit early, and perhaps we can have a bit more whiskey, you and I. Right, you are, ma'am. I'll uh, look forward to it. And, oh, so, yeah, and uh, and yeah, I think that's that's where we will uh, where we will wrap things up for this evening. Um, and um, uh, thank you very much, everyone. That was uh, that was a lot of fun um, uh, and um, obviously we've we because we're mid phase we'll exit we'll, we'll we'll drop back into the day phase again next time when we we start up again um and uh we don't have a dust, uh, dawn phase to do because we've done that already um so yeah thank you very much everyone i'll stop the recording now <laughs>